Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Make a Physics Engine. We left off last time resolving our polygon collisions. So previously we had talked about resolving collision between circles, two circles, and then we talked about resolving collision between two polygons, and now I need to combine those and resolve a polygon and circle collision. And we're going to use the separating axis theorem to do that. Um, and the trick to the separating axis theorem is really understanding which axes do we need to test in order to to find out if there is separation and then resolve the collision. I'm thinking this will probably be the last time we need to talk about um, intersection or collision detection and then hopefully move on to the more uh, physics part of a physics engine. So let's go ahead and get started with a polygon circle collision detection and resolution. All right, so here we are back in our collisions class and just like we have intersect polygons here, we're going to make another a function for intersecting uh, polygons and circles. So a Boolean return if they are intersecting. So I'm just gonna call this intersect circle polygon. And so let's pass in the circle information and then we'll pass in the, in the polygon information. So we'd see the circle center, the radius, and then all the vertices. Okay, and then finally the depth value there. All right, uh, I'm gonna move some of this information down to the next line just so it's easier to read. Okay, intersecting polygons and circles, um, um, let's just talk about all of the axis tests that we need to make. So back in our drawing program, here's what we were doing last time, intersecting and uh, resolving collision between two polygons. So here's the situation we have right now with a circle and a polygon. And let's talk about all of the axis tests we need to do. For the polygon, the axis tests are pretty much the same. So we just find the normals, and then we use those for our axis uh, to find the intersection between the two objects, okay? or to find separation or intersection. And then we have, uh, for circles, we need one more test. So we do all of those tests. And then the next test we do is we find the closest point on the polygon to the circle. And then we make a, um, a vector pointing from the center to that closest point. And then that becomes the axis, the final axis for testing for separation. Let's go back to our code and just see what that looks like. So the, initially, the, the polygon code is going to be the same. So I'm going to go down to the intersect polygons method. And I'm going to copy all of that code for the first loop and just paste it right in here. And you can see I'm, I'm setting the initial values for the normal and depth as well. And since we don't have two vertices, um, two sets of vertices, we only have one, let's just get rid of the vertices A and make that just vertices. This first project uh, method is gonna be the same. So we're projecting the polygon onto the axis. The second one uh, we need to get rid of, and this is gonna be, um, this is gonna become project circle onto the axis. So I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna make another function called project circle. And we'll just place that right here. Uh, void return and let's project a circle. And let's pass in the center and the radius. We also need to pass in the uh, axis we want to project onto and then finally our minimum and maximum. Okay, so now pro to project the circle onto the axis, we need to find out the points on the circle that we actually need to project. And um, let's just say we have an axis that we're projecting on that looks something like this. So in order to find the, the points on the circle that we're going to project are going to look something like this. So we're looking to find points that are here and here. And the way we do that is we just take the axis that we're projecting on, we normalize it, and then we're going to take the direction of the axis from the center of the circle and then move out by the radius, and then we're going to get that point. And then we'll do the opposite direction, and then we'll get that point. Okay. So back in our code, we're going to take the axis and we're going to normalize it and we're going to get a we're going to get a direction. I'm going to call this the direction and we're simply going to use our math library to normalize the axis. Um, let's find out the actual uh, the amount we need to move in that direction to get to the edge of the circles. So that's just going to be the direction and radius. For lack of a better term, that's what I'm going to call it. So in order to do that, we just take the direction and multiply it by the radius. And then in order to get the points here on the edge, all we have to do is add that direction and radius to the center, and we'll get this point over here. And I'm just gonna call that point one on the circle. We're gonna take the center and add in the direction and radius. And then to get the other side of the circle that we need to project, we just subtract the value. So point two is gonna be the center minus the direction and radius. Now we just project these points onto the axis using the dot product. And I'm just gonna save those as the min and the, min and the max. So uh, let's set the min to uh, point 0.1 projected onto the axis, and the max will be uh, point 0.2 projected onto the axis. 
Now, the only thing I don't know is, I'm not sure if this min and max is actually correct, uh, meaning the min we're getting here might actually be greater than the max. So for robustness here, let's just test if the min is greater than the max, then let's reverse them. So in order to reverse them, I'm just going to save the min to a temporary value. We'll set the min to max, and then the and then the max will be equal to that temporary value. Okay, and that'll just swap those values for us, and we can put a kind of a remark here, uh, swap. Okay, and uh, eventually I may want to make a function for that in our math library just to swap values if we need it more, but uh, that'll project the circle. Um, okay, so we're back in our circle polygon intersection method. Okay, we don't actually have a max B and a min B anymore, so let's go ahead and create those. So we're going to project now the circle. Just pass in the information. Okay, and then we'll have the min B and the max B again. And then from there, that should be everything we need. Okay, so that first loop is done. We've projected onto all of the vertices of the uh, polygon. Now we ha need to handle the last point. And the last projection we need is that uh, that vector that points from the center of the circle to the closest point on the polygon. And so I'm going to make a function here that'll find that closest point. Oh, and actually, back in this project circles, I want this to be private. I don't want that to be public. That'll be strictly for use inside of the collisions uh, class. OK, and so now let's do another function that will find the closest point on the polygon. OK, let's pass in that point, uh, or let's pass in the circle center, and then the actual vertices. All right, and uh, the result is going to be the index into the closest point on the circle. And I'll just set that to negative 1 to start. Um, and then I also want to store the minimum distance. And we'll set that to the floating point maximum, since we're going to be doing comparisons. Uh, just loop through all of the vertices. Let's get the current distance between the vertex we're on and the circle center. Okay, and that'll just be, we'll use our math library, between V and the um, circle center. And if this new distance is less than our min distance, then let's save it. And then we'll also save the point that we're on this current index i as the minimum distance point. So the result will be equal to i, and then we are all done. We just need to return the results. So now we can find the closest point on the polygon to our circle center. Let's go ahead and retrieve that. So I'm going to call this the CP index for the closest point index. We're just going to find that result. Okay, and then I want the actual um, value of the closest point. So I'm going to call that CP, and that'll just be the index into the vertices. Okay, now that we have that, we want the axis. So the new axis that we're testing is going to be, let's see, I want this pointing from the circle center to the closest point. So that'll be the closest point minus the circle center. And uh, actually, I'm getting some errors up here for the axis. It doesn't like that I've defined an axis here inside this loop. And then I've gone down here and defined it again. So I'm going to bring that outside the loop. And let's just make an axis vector. And we can get rid of this definition in the loop. And then this one down here as well. Okay, and so now that I have that axis, I want to do the same thing I did inside the loop. So I'm going to copy all of this information here. Same thing we did for the polygon axis projections. Um, we're just going to bring this down here and do the same thing again. And then uh, once again, I don't think it likes the axis depth being defined here and then outside the loop down here as well. So let's go ahead and get rid of those definitions. And I'm just going to define it outside the loop up here, just like I did the um, axis. And we'll set that to zero by default. Oh, and now the other thing it doesn't like is that I've got a minimum and a maximum for A and B defined here inside the loop. And I'm doing the same thing down here um, outside the loop. So let's let's do that again. We'll define, or we'll get the variables uh, set up outside the loop. So we'll have the min A and the min max B as well. Okay, I'm going to get rid of all these floating point definitions since we've already uh, defined it in our function. Uh, same thing down here. Okay, and uh, that should do it. That should be everything we need. Um, the only last thing to do is at the end, we're going to return true that there was intersection. If we, if we actually get to the end of this function, then we know there was intersection, and we are all done. And I'm not seeing any errors. I think that is everything we need. Oh, right. Uh, there's actually one, one more thing. Just like inside our polygon, intersection test, or where is that? Inside our polygon intersection test, at the end, we tested to make sure that the normal was in the right direction or that the second object, the normal was pushing the second object out of the first object. And then also we need to normalize our normal and get the correct depth value. So I'm just going to copy this information directly over to our function. So let's copy that. Uh, here we are back in our circle intersect polygon function, and we'll just paste this right at the end. 
Okay, so we're correcting the depth and normal. Um, let's see, so for these center values, actually, the first one is actually the center of the circle, which we already have. And so I can just put circle center in here just like that. Uh, this second one is going to be the polygon uh, center like that. And we just need to pass in the vertices to that function to find the, the center or the arithmetic mean. And instead of center B, this is going to be the polygon center. Okay, so that's going to make a vector in the direction pointing from the circle center to the polygon center. Okay, and that should be everything we need. At the end, we return true because it has not found separation. So there's definitely intersection at this point. Okay, so I think that is it. Let's go back to our game class and see if we can actually implement this. Uh, right now in our game class, here's the initialization function. And we're creating all the kind of the random bodies right here. I'm going to get rid of this uh, code right here where I'm telling it which type of bodies to create. And it's just going to create random types at this point. Okay, so we're going to have random circles and boxes. Because now we're intersecting boxes and circles. Let's see if we can actually do that. Uh, we're going to scroll down to our update function. And we are now inside of our collision loop. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of our intersect polygons function by bringing uh, this up here. And then that code will not compile. And instead of uh, intersect polygons, we're going to now... Let's intersect circle polygon, and let's just determine if there is an intersection. Uh, then we'll run this code. I'm just going to copy this directly over from our last um, function. So if there is an intersection, we're going to handle the code, or the we're going to handle the intersection by doing this stuff right here. Okay. So now part of the problem we have here is that body A and body B they could be a polygon. They could both be boxes, or they could both be circles, or one could be a box and one could be a circle. And what we're looking for is we want one to be a box and one to be a circle, and then we're gonna run this code right here. So um, let's just do a quick test here. So if body A is a box, uh, actually I wanna take the test the shape type to see um, if it's a box, and then uh, actually, and then we'll test to see if, uh, if body B, if the shape type of that one is a circle, so we know they're opposites, then we want to run this code. Um, okay, so we have the first one's a box and the second one's a circle. Okay, so if that's the case, then um, let's see, it wants a circle first. So we're going to pass in body B, uh, body B's information from the circle. So body, uh, body B uh, position for the center and then body B radius. And then body A, we're going to pass in the transform vertices. And then, okay, let's pass out the normal and the depth. So that'll take care of if A is a box and B is a circle, but if the opposite is true, I also wanna do some testing. So if, uh, let's go ahead and reverse this. I'm gonna copy this information. So now if body B is a box and body A is a circle, then let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and uh, copy this. Think. <laughs> Let's see if this works out like this. So I'm copying this over. Um, okay, so instead of... Okay, here we go. So in the intersect polygon, um, A is a circle now, so I'm going to pass in A for the position and radius, and then from body B, we're going to get the transform vertices. And then everything else should be the same, I think, except... Um, okay, except inter intersection code. Um, let's see. So for this one, body A is going to get pushed out of body B by the normal. So I might want to reverse the normal there. Yeah, so this one down here, the normal should be correct because it's going to push body A, or it's going to push body B out of body A, and that's what we have written here. But with this one, it's going to push body A out of body B, and so I need to change these normal values down here for our collision resolution. And I think that's it. Let's go ahead and test it and just see what happens. Okay, circle to circle collision is not working because we're not testing for that. Um, but there is our circle to box collision. Okay. Uh, actually, it looks like it's working, uh, working great. Let's go ahead and test this box over here. Uh, perfect. And then if I, if I were to push this box over here, I don't think it should intersect... Uh, with the other box no but because we got rid of that code but um it should this box should intersect with a circle all right there we go 
Uh, that looks really good. And um, let's see. In fact, I should be able to push this one down here as well. All right, so that's it. That's Polygon Circle Collision Detection and Resolution.